by moist air, lighter than dry air. And where does it float? If you say that, think of the clouds. So what are clouds made of? Made of? Water, right? So is it on the ground or is it? Is that lighter? That's why clouds stay up. So we see that in nature, but it's not intuitive to us because we think that when it's more, there's more water in it, then it's denser. So work out show that it actually float up. It all starts from the from the composition of air. Remember the composition of air? What was it? Of air, um, it to memorize this value because you will use it once in a while. I'm not sure whether you guys can see. Is it still okay? It's okay, right? So, uh, uh, 29, 28, and so on. Of course, there are some decimal places there, but let's just work with 28 to 29 kilograms per mole or grams per mole. It's the same because it's a ratio. Okay. We calculate the uh, average molecular output from the composition. What is the composition of air? I need you to remember what you've learned before in the videos that I gave, and also even from primary school um, subject science. So again, the main composition of air is nitrogen gas, which is about 78%, 78.08%. If it's you're studying at master's level or in the university, but then um, if it's at the secondary school level, then maybe you say 80%, right? Just to make it simple. So 80 you'll be like zero. The molecular weight of nitrogen gas. Major gas component. Hundred percent, twenty percent. I know the actual one is seventy-eight oxygen, twenty point nine something. Then there's one percent of gases, including carbon dioxide and so on. If you watch the video, then you know what I mean, right? It's simple. It's zero. So can we calculate the average molecular weight of air? Remember, air is a composition of gases, right? And we're using the two main components to calculate the average molecular of air. You know what is the molecular weight of nitrogen gas? What is the molecular weight of nitrogen? Dr. Kazama, you were saying something? 28. 28. Nitrogen is 14. So 14 plus 14, 28, right? Okay. Which is 16 times uh, 16 times 2, which gives two. Can you calculate that, please? I don't have two with me. And then we have to do some activity, or else you'll be sleepy. Yeah, 28.8.
if now this is a composition of 80% and 20%, what happens if you increase the water content of this air? Think critically. Will it change the composition? Will it add on or will it change the composition? It will change the composition, right? It will not go more than one. Because in the end it will all add up, it's a fraction. It will add up to one, but if you replace one of this with water, it will reduce either one of this, right? So this is the molecular weight of is this considered dry air? There's no water there. Right? So if we have a molecular weight of uh, moist air now that contains water, it would increase the water content. I mean the water content of moist air of course will be higher. So Let's just uh, change arbitrarily the values. Let's say we change the concentration of oxygen and, and the composition of oxygen because of water. So let's say we maintain, this is just arbitrary, means that I just choose whichever gap and change to see what happens. So 0 0.80 values. Yes. So, like we have nitrogen gas plus 0. Uh, now, we change it to, let's say, 1.8 molecular weight of oxygen plus 0.02, right? Because now we remove from this one, so 0.02 molecular weight of water. Now, why, why did I choose this value? Is it a value that I take up, I take up from the air, or is it a, a reasonable value to choose? Remember the chemical composition of the atmosphere video that I created, and I know that's only about eight of you who saw it. So <laughs> you guys can like check if you saw it or not. But remember that I mentioned that the concentration of water varies significantly with the surface. That means over the desert there might be zero percent of water, but over the ocean it's four percent of water. Four percent of water is quite high. It ranges from zero to four. Unlike other gases like nitrogen gas, where it's mostly eighty percent, seventy nine throughout the world, but the, of the water content of air can vary significantly, that goes from 0 to 4 percent. You understand the, the magnitude of that? You understand how important it is? Because the other gases don't change as much. Only water content change. So this is a very important component of the atmosphere. It, it, it affects weather, it creates severe weather too. And so on. So if there's a lot uh, higher amounts of water in the air, it, uh, it means that there's a lot of energy in the air, in the atmosphere, a lot of energy to drive the thunderstorms, to drive the weather. So this is a very large component, and it goes from zero to four percent. So what happens to this uh, uh, the molecular weight of moist air? Will it increase or decrease? What do you think? Decrease. Decrease. Remember, just now you're asking how much the molecular weight decrease when there's water, right? It should be increased, you think. But do the calculation and see if you can what happens if you use this 2% water. What is the value here? Can you calculate for me? Yeah, you
let's say it's choosing the value, but you want that I'm not focusing on the unit, so the value is not being exactly correct. So let's we use a P of um,
They know how Alright, so 